Okay. Currently working within SketchUp, I'd like to take a moment to uh, explain how you use a function called an array. An array is simply uh, a way in which to lay out multiple versions of, in this case, a, a group or a component. So this, this object here, if I click on it, you see it doesn't allow me to select the, the edges and or the face because it's currently a group. And again, you simply get to that by selecting the entire thing and uh, let me explode it first, show you. Uh, so if this is an exploded object now, if I right click on it, I'm able to make this a group or a component. They essentially do the same thing for what we're working with. In this case, I'm just going to make it a group, which means I can't pull those component or those group pieces apart. Uh, they want to move as an individual or a single object. So it's now a, a grouped object. One way in which we are going to need to use the array tool uh, or the function of, of making an array is if we create a circle and if you're going to design the, the teeth on a gear, um, in this case we have that metal object that has these little teeth on the inside of it and we also have um, some circles which need to be located around the outer rim of that metal object which we are trying to reproduce. We can use an array to do that. Now the way in which this array tool works, and you have to be pretty specific with what you're clicking, is first you must have the, the grouped object selected. In this case, we're going to array around a circle, which is actually a little more complicated than uh, creating an array uh, in a vertical line. And, and the array tool is preloaded with either of the move tools uh, or the rotate tool. So in this case, we're going to use a rotate tool, but the move tool works in a linear fashion. Uh, excuse me, I'm going to I want to move this object. So I'm going to take the midpoint of this surface and snap it with the midpoint over here. And I'm going to get this aligned with the face. So that way we got a nice nice edge here on which to, to work from. So I got my object lined up cleanly along the edge of this circle in this case. Now, with that object selected, I'm going to come back and I'm going to select the center of the circle from which I wish to array and then I'm going to select the edge of that object or that grouped object. So I'm going to click that and what, it's, what you notice is it will allow you to rotate and to move that tool around the edge of this circle. Now that's great but we want to create an array which is multiples of that object for instance the teeth on a gear. So I'm going to do is hit the option key on the keyboard and I'm going to slide it over just the distance that I wish to slide over to the next um, to the next tooth. Again, this is a, a one way in which you can control this is by setting the number of sides on your circle to the number of teeth you want on your gear. In this case, I currently have a 26-sided circle set up, so I can end up with 26 gears pretty quick and easily. So by hitting the option, the option key and getting a copy of in my move tool, I can click and drop an identical copy on the next associated face of that circle. Now, the quick and easy way to do this for the remainder of these pieces is to go and hit X, as in multiply, uh, array, and I'm going to hit 25. And what I've noticed is that this has gone all the way around, and it's actually uh, overlaid, overlapped on my last one here. And it's done it with the current repetition that it should be in line with the number of sides. Now, I have 26 selected, and I may have... Actually, I may have the wrong number of sides set up on this circle because you can see that there's a little bit of an overlap on the corner and it didn't quite go all the way around. So um, I'd have to play around with it a little bit, but the array command allows you to fit multiple uh, instances of the same move over and over again to create those teeth on a gear. I'm going to undo this. And I'm also going to show you there's an additional way that if you know the distance Whoops, I got to select this surface first. Use the rotate tool. I'm going to find the center of the circle. And I'm going to move it with the option key selected. I'm going to move it 90 degrees. So if I swung two pieces 90 degrees to each other and I know I want an additional uh, four or five in between there, now you're dividing up that, that move. And now you would hit the slash, the forward slash. And again, I'm going to hit five this time. 
and I can fill that in evenly with five equally spaced teeth between, well, five being including the, the end piece, so it actually turns out to be four, but it will fill that gap with the remaining four. So if you understand how that function is applied, you can start creating a lot of work, or you can do a lot of work without having to place each of these teeth individually, which could take a rather long period of time. Now, the same command works linearly. So if the, with this selected object, if I decide to move it, and again, press Option, which loads the cursor with a copy. If I decide to move that object in a linear manner with the Move tool uh, a given distance, I can repeat that by hitting X100. And what you'll notice is you'll have 100 in a row, 100 of those moves made one after another. If you were to go and do the exact same move but come out to a given distance, let's say a distance of 20, and now I hit forward slash and 10, it's going to give me 10 consecutive pieces. The 9 have filled in equally or split up the distance in between them. So again, the array tool is a, a neat way to apply the move and the rotate tool. So that way you can, in this case, place teeth on a gear um, or lo locate multiple items in a row without having to click and move and click and move each one individually. So hopefully this speeds up the way in which you work and I'll have this on my YouTube page.